Javier Malay has my attention. He is an interesting politician who goes around saying how he wants to take the power from the government and give it to the people. Que cuando yo te voy a una elección y te pido el voto, no es para que me des el poder, es para que te lo pueda devolver. Y ellos en realidad necesitan el poder para lograr las cosas que sin poder no podrían tener. I.e. through deregulating things and just making it easier for the people to commence their own business. Something that we haven't seen happen in quite some time. I don't, I don't know if we've seen this kind of freedom movement since maybe the inception of the United States. We're going to take a look at that, and we're going to take a look at his response to the protest and maybe something that America should uh, pay attention to. So we get this article here from Reason because they only seem to the most reasonable outlet covering this every other outlet definitely has a leftist bias and we know how Malay feels about those Porque son una mierda. there we go Malay begins shock therapy in Argentina the self-described anarcho-capitalist president devalued the peso halved government ministries and announced a series of spending cuts so this is essentially what the first paragraph also says and I will say that having the government ministry is already a 50% spending cut, right? Okay, well, I'm obviously all those industries are probably getting the same amount of money. You get my point. On Tuesday, Malay's new administration announced a sharp currency devaluation, weakening the peso by more than 50% as a result of official exchange rate increased from $365 per dollar to over $800. That doesn't sound good. After years of previous administrations forcefully slowing the, pe the peso's decline, the central bank also set a monthly devaluation target of 2% in an attempt to anchor inflation. We're always worse off because our response has been to attack the consequence, but not the problem, Economy Minister Luis Caputo said in a, in a televised address. What we've come to do is the opposite of what we always did, and that solved the root of the problem. That make, that sounds like good logic. It doesn't look good, right? Your, your money was worth this much, and now it's worth this much. Right? That, that's kind of weird. But they're coming at it from a perspective that it hasn't been done before to try and change the economic downfall that Argentina's been in for who knows how long now. I remember seeing pictures of just the Argentinio pesos just littering the streets because it wasn't worth anything. For a few months, we're going to be worse than before, Caputo said, adding that the adding that the government plans to double social welfare programs to help the poor absorb the shock. This sounds the opposite a direction of where he would want to go, but if, when done properly, I think that it will help. It will, this, they, they can help the poor find their own way to succeed, which is something that American welfare doesn't want. And, he's, and, like, and like he said here before as well, for a few months, it's going to be worse than before. This is the part where the room gets dirty before it gets cleaned. In another bold act, the chainsaw-wielding president cut the number of federal ministries by half from 18 to nine. Yes, please. Only the ministries of foreign affairs, economy, security, defense, human capital, justice, infrastructure, health, and internal affairs, I'd even question this, uh, remain. Meanwhile, the, minis the ministries of transport, public works, science, culture, territorial development, habitat, tourism, livestock and agriculture, and women's affairs were either eliminated, eliminated or recombined. Going forward, the government has announced a series of spending cuts to solve Argentina's addiction to fiscal deficit. Now you see, this is the, ah, man, I wish. I wish we could get like that here. It plans to cut spending equivalent to 2.9% of its gross domestic product by reducing energy and transport subsidy, cutting security and pensions. Now that doesn't sound great, but the idea of getting rid of the addiction to the fiscal deficit. I made a video the other day on Festivus and how it's just government waste and how that report probably doesn't even touch the tip of the iceberg. And it sounds like Millet and his team are trying to get a handle of Argentine issues here. And we see here that Millet is doing the things that he said he was going to do, which is something that when he got elected, I had questions about. You can go check out that video um, that I did a few weeks ago. That, 
I, I was, you know, politicians say a lot of shit, right? Like they, and, and you never, and they don't deliver on the vast majority of it. So this is awesome to see. I'm excited to see where this goes. Now let's take a look at how the people are reacting. There, there's, there's a lot of people who aren't so happy about this. And here's, and let's look at Malay's response to that. Javier Malay's government announced his plan to crack down on Argentina protests. What? Crack down? What does that mean? Minister of Security Patricia Bullrich has presented a new protocol against street blockades as tension increases over the economic cuts announced this week. So I've got this highlighted here. The new protocol against demonstrations plans to group the four security forces, the federal police, the Gnader the Marie, I get Gnader Marie, I don't. I don't know, the Naval Prefecture and the Airport Security Police under the Ministry of Security to break up protest blocking streets and roads. Action will be taken until the, circu until the circulation space is completely freed. That means no more blocking the roads. Bullridge said the forces will use minimum sufficient force which will be graduated in proportion to the degree of resistance. Minister and former presidential candidate for the traditional right wing who allied with Malay after her defeat has appealed to one of the main concerns amongst her voters, the idea that street blockades generate disorder that does not allow people to live normally and in peace. There's so many people sick of this all across the world. I can't remember. I want to say, now don't do this. But there was a guy in, let's say, New Zealand who ventilated blocking a road at a protest. That's not good. But I've seen many videos of people in the UK, and now we've got videos, we've got videos of it happening in America for different reasons. I haven't seen any of the oil videos, but people in the UK are dragging these protesters off the road. And uh, I haven't seen much of a reaction from America, except for the fact that they just sit there blocking the freeways. In support of terrorism. Shut it down! Shut it down! We want to put a wall and clear and the Bay Area there is no business. Federal forces will have the power to arrest those who commit crimes during protests and will be able to act on public transportation to seize protests, materials such as sticks, and to investigate hooded citizens or those attending protests while trying not to be recognized. That's right. If you're going to stand up for your beliefs, do it proudly. Don't hide. Otherwise, do you actually believe in that or do you have another ulterior motive? So let me know what you think below. What do you think of Javier Malay? I would personally, I would love to see this kind of movement in America. Yes, it would get ugly at first. And a lot of people would be pissed because they don't understand. But six months, a year down the road, it's going to be a giant boom. I, huge boom. And I can't wait to see that happen for Argentina. Let me know your thoughts below. Hit the like button. And if you haven't yet, description would be greatly appreciated. Until next time, have a good one.